So you want to get into Magic the Gathering investing. Well, that's pretty kick-ass in my opinion. But I made some mistakes in my time when I first started, and I hope you don't make the same mistakes. So I am going to go through them in this video, and maybe you'll learn a little something. But if you hang out, we'll talk about it, and we'll have a great time. All right, so the first mistake that I made, and you might actually think this is a good thing, is that I would go online as I was thinking about buying a product, and I would ask people's opinions and, and see what they thought, and, you know, eventually I would always just value that person's opinion over my own, over my gut instinct about a, about a product. Now, I'm totally for, you know, seeing what public perception is on something, especially maybe like going back in time and into like Twitter or something and see how people, you know, reacted to the set when it first came out. That's one thing. But like going onto like MTG finance boards and things like that and saying, hey, what do you guys think about this set? <sighs> you know, more often than not on those boards, you just see negativity and you see, you know, oh, we tried that or something like that. And it's, you know, it's not, it's not good for right now. And, you know, and they may have their points, but eventually at the end of the day, I had to learn how to trust myself, you know, and really, and really just give it a go and take a risk. And that's, you know, one of the main things about investing in this hobby is that, well, it's all a risk and it all has some calculated sort of risk. So there is a chance it could go down. There is, you know, obviously a chance it could go up. Historically, most magic sets do go up. It's, you know, essentially when and how much over time they grow. Um, but, you know, take that as it is. It's just sometimes you have to learn how to trust yourself and really just say, you know what, I'm going in there. I'm going to do it. This is something that I'm, I, I've am i done my research. I feel like I'm good with, with my opinions. I don't need somebody else's opinion to make me feel whole. And I think sometimes I, I still need to, to do that. Sometimes I still need to, you know, pull that out of myself. Sometimes I still even go into forums and see what people are thinking about something. If something feels really risky. But at the end of the day, you have to have confidence in yourself if you're willing to invest and put your money and let your money work for you. At the end of the day, this is a decision for you. Somebody else shouldn't make it, right? So think about it like that. So my second piece of advice, and it might seem obvious to some, but it's to diversify, right? Um, spread your money out. There, you don't need to, uh, you know, put everything into Unfinity, let's say, I, since we're talking about Unfinity in this video. Um, and also, you know, consider 401ks, you know, everything like that, stocks. It's it's not, you know, the hardest thing in the world to, to wrap your head around. So don't, you know, overthink it or anything. But just remember, you know, if you put all your money in one thing, it, it could go up or down with that one thing. It's it's a better idea to spread it out. And, you know, hopefully all of your investments move in one direction, but some will go up, some will go down. And, and that's just, you know, the way life works. But just remember, if you spread it out, you have a better chance at doing better in the future, right? So an easy one, but you know, think about it. It's, it's, it's definitely a good idea. There's a, what's that old, uh, there's an old investing phrase. Rudy says it all the time, but it, it's older than him. It's, um, it's, oh, diversification is like the only free lunch. You know what I mean? You don't get a free lunch in investing, but diversification is that. So, um, yeah, think, think about that and let's move on to the next one. All right. So my third piece of advice is very simply put, just do your research, you know, Look up the product, see the single cards, see if they're moving up. And if they are, there's a chance that the sealed product could move up as well in the future. Now that's depending on reprints or anything like that, but you know, and reprints are what they are, they happen. But generally speaking, if the cards in the set are desirable, the sealed product will move up, especially as they go out of print. And as there's less and less on the market, less and less single cards on the market, it's gonna push that price up. And the same thing works for single cards as well. You know, if there's, you know, new decks coming out that and people are specking on single cards, the demand's gonna be higher, those cards are gonna move up as well. So it all kind of ties in there. And just, you know, a little funny story about, <laughs> about uh, you know, beginner uh, investor Alex back in like 2016, 17, uh, me and my buddy, he, my buddy comes up to me and he says, Alex, I found this new set or this old set, it's from 94, 95, and it's called Fallen Empires. <laughs> and obviously, if you know Fallen Empires back in those times, boxes were maybe like, I don't know, like 150, let's say. It may have even been under that at that time. But uh, we thought we hit the jackpot. We, we thought 
we got in there first before anybody even knew of it. And later we obviously find out that Fallen Empires was a heavily overprinted set. Not many of the cards in there are of value because it's so overprinted. Uh, and it's obviously not, not the best move. Today, actually, in the past five years, it's had much more of an uptick. I don't know if that's, you know, to do with COVID, anything like that, crypto booms. But um, but now those boxes are going for like 350, 400. So I don't know, maybe, maybe we were right back in the day <laughs> to try to get in then. But but back then it was a it was a silly choice just because the liquidity was so high, uh, the demand was so low, and it just didn't really make sense back then. So um, yeah, just a little silly story there. And just a little funny one at the end, if you made it this far in the video, guys, um, just if you go out and have a fun night, uh, just leave it at that. Don't buy anything when you have a fun night, especially if you're not going to remember it the next day. A uh, little funny story about me in college is I decided to go to a fun house party and have a blast and everything like that. And three days later, a case of Fate Reforged appeared on my door. So um, now, mind you, I like Fate Reforged, but obviously um, it's not moving much now. Um, I think I actually opened all those boxes, to be perfectly honest with you. I just thought it was stupid and I wanted my Ugans. But at the end of the day, just, you know, make sure you're in sound mind when you're when you're buying things. It's it's not that hard to be, you know, when we're when we're at our. I mean, let's just call it what it is. When we're at our most sober, we're, we're, you know, we make better decisions. We look at things less emotionally and, uh, and it's just worth it to you. I laugh about it now just because it's silly. And, you know, at the end of the day, who cares? You know, that was years and years ago, but just make smart decisions. You know, if you're trying to make a, an investment, probably don't want to buy stocks when you're shit faced. Right. And so, you know, a similar thing with magic. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for making it to the end of the video. Don't forget to like or dislike, leave a comment, and please consider subscribing if you want to see more MTG Finance news. Um, you know, all things magic content. I really enjoy doing this channel and I appreciate every single one of you. Thank you so, so much for 200 subscribers. It is, I couldn't be more thankful. And uh, as a little special treat to all you 200, here's a blooper of my dog just, uh, just a few minutes ago as I was recording. Biggie, do you want to say hi? Say hi. See ya. <laughs>